Hey everyone, welcome back to Skate 2. I'm Insetic. With me on this set is Blank Tester. Hey kids, how's it going? And Zindictive. Sup, lads? So we're continuing on with the DLC, going back to two more Skate 1 locations. And so for this special occasion, I remade like the base Skate 1 guy. Really? As well as I could. You oh, know, okay. Yeah, I remember he starts shirtless with like kind of green tan cargo shorts oh yeah <laughs> the cargo shorts it's we kind of weird if you think about it but uh yeah so we've already seen the community center so in this part we're going to the other two the uh elementary school and then the parkade i really want cargo shorts to come back into in vogue yeah they're, they're kind of neat think, honestly i think i think cargo shorts don't get mixed like pants styles don't get mixed enough you know, yeah. like, I want cargo shorts sweatpants. Or, like, uh, or, like, uh, jean oh culottes. My God. You know, yeah. denim culottes. Yeah, the problem is that you gotta combat with the, uh, the fashion people who are very uh, antsy. Who, who care? Yeah, yeah, you care a bit too much. I mean, yeah, I don't care at I, all. I don't, I don't care. Exactly. I, I feel I don't like... Care Pants branched out like once, and that was the Jinko era. And that's yeah. true. That's that's kind of why they maybe Hi. haven't branched out since. Sure. I mean, I feel like we got burned, <laughs> um, mm. maybe a little too badly by the Jinko era. But like the the fact of the matter is that like at the time people thought they were cool. Yeah. You know. And like if you're not if you're not living in the now, trying to like have fun now, like you can only do so much yeah. to try to future proof your look. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you hear the phrase, you know, dance like no one is looking, wear mm -hmm. clothes oh, like no one everything. is looking. Yeah, dress like no one is looking. Exactly. exactly. You know, that's that's the shit right there. You know what yeah. you know what the big revelation about that is? No one is looking. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about you. Exactly. At no all. One, no one yeah. gives a shit unless you're on some kind of fucking well, runway show or something. Nobody cares what you look like. Yeah, like in 20 minutes, they will not remember you at all. So just dress however you feel comfortable dressing. Dress like a clown if you want. You should yeah. no one will give a shit there either. I mean, if you don't, if you don't get in their way, if you don't bother them, it really won't matter. It's not gonna matter at all. Yeah, exactly. Just keep the horn out of their faces, and they won't give a shit. I mean, honestly, that was the thing. I wish I had learned a lot younger that nobody really gives a shit about you because like that at the end of the day like any feelings of self-consciousness i had about like Yo, embarrassment are you know at least part of it is like i feel stupid even aside from people but like part of it for sure was i don't want to look stupid in front of other people but almost nobody cares you know, like, right, my parents you. care a little bit. That's about it. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, ca I care enough personally, Rolling. still, probably, to, yeah, uh, same. you know, work for everyone else. I no, mm. mo People don't even, like, I, I no just one mean, like, sees me most days. So. Well, that's true. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's still, like, well, if something, if you enjoy something and it's a little bit cringe, that's fine. It's okay to be cringe. Yeah. You know, I, right? like, everybody's a little bit cringe. Yeah, you know, yeah. when it can be, it's fine. You can be a little bit cringe. Be a little okay. cringe, boy. You have my approval. I, okay, I feel like it's more okay to be cringe than it is to be a cringe boy. Like, oh, you said sure. that, and I <laughs> oh, felt sure. like a little more like, ooh, I don't know yeah. about that, chief. <laughs> no, no, that's that is true. It's more. It's okay to you be. You don't want to go your life being a cringe boy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't. You don't want to, unless that's what you want to do. In which case, I'm sorry for you, but yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. yeah. It's like living your life as the stupid kid from Hey Arnold. It's just, eh, you know. Yeah. It's like, living okay. your life as anyone from Hey Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Move it, football head. Yeah. Oh god. I I watch the like you know when I go when we go to sleep my wife likes to put on like video essays and because you know when we're going to sleep she wants to put on some new stuff so that she's having she's listening to something you know interesting and new I'm always oh, hearing 
weird video essays because we've gone through all the big channels and now we're going through like a bunch of small channels and like just the other day i fell asleep listening to a very serious psychological breakdown of helga from hey arnold about how like about how like the way her parents treated her malformed the way she experiences and expresses love and i'm like oh my god Oh, good Jesus, Jesus. Oh, this is wow. so heavy. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, to that be said, fair, they were right. for memory, for memory, like, hey, Arnold does get rather heavy-handed at times. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, they play it for laughs most of the time, but, like, they were absolutely on point talking about, like, yeah, no, she had, like, a completely malformed sense of how to express or receive love. And nobody, nobody cared about her, so it was like... I mean, in a bad way. Like, oh, nice. Holy yeah, crap. very nice. Yeah, you know, I don't know how... I don't know how I really feel about those, like, really long video essays on, on specific things. Like, yeah. as a new trend, kind of. Like, sometimes, every so often, it is kind of cool to find, like, a channel that has decent length videos covering stuff that, you know, you hadn't really thought about or whatever. Yeah, like but, a deep dive on a topic. But then mm. also sometimes you look at the video length and it's four hours and you're like, I'm never going <laughs> to see this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. There was like a five hour, like, Dark Souls retrospective video essay that for some reason I was like, okay, I actually kind of want to watch this whole thing. And it took me several days. Mm. Yeah, uh, Quentin Reviews recently has been doing that. His most recent video from a month ago is eight hours long. Yeah, sorry Pyrocynical, I am not watching a seven and a half hour long video. Yeah, yeah like Jesus a, Christ. We have watched the and that that second part of his Quentin Reviews. That's still a two-parter, right? The first part is five and a half hours long, and the second part is eight hours long, and that eight hour long video we have seen multiple times now. Yeah, it's like me expecting anybody to watch my freaking long play of that extreme right, sprint great. game, now which is like, like seven and a half hours long. Like, Good people God. aren't gonna watch that. People, I think like, there's like a difference oh, between be? basically like just gameplay or maybe someone talking over it. I mean, like yeah. I don't watch live streams at all. You know, yeah. and, and like a uh, heavily edited something that is that same length. You know, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I think the difference is for gameplay versus versus like a video essay. A video essay is a lot of analysis in, in usually, and so like analysis requires you to kind of watch it in at least in ch big long chunks, right? You can't dip in for five minutes and then catch up later um, because you're not going to be able to coherently understand what was being said. But like with gameplay, a lot of that is more about archival reasons to, you know, like, if you're recording gameplay of some ancient game that no one's ever heard of, this may be the only footage anyone has, not in a hundred years, but in five minutes. Mm, yeah. You know? Oh, out, like, the, every copy of the game might get destroyed tomorrow. Yeah, at, <laughs> that, sometimes, at, sometimes that's how I feel when I end up finding, like, the weird shit for the PS1 and such. Right. Like, even no, stuff that uh, Seth recommended me, like Cyclone Circus, which is weird in its own right. Like, yeah. nobody's really looked into that game, no, honestly, except for me. Yeah. And it's just like, any time now, copies could be gone and no one would be able to play it. And it's just Dude, like, yeah. well, shit. Like, like, I remember, you know, some of the Are games I've right? played and recorded over the years. Like, I haven't checked back on them in a while, mm. but like... I knew that when I was playing and recording them, it was like the only full playthrough series right. that anyone had done. And it, it, it's kind of crazy to A, think that that was the case, but B, think that someone might pop up with like a five hour video and video essay on, you know, Gen X 2 <laughs> or Beach King Stunt Racer. Well, know? see, that's just yeah. it. Like, I don't think anybody will. I d like, I don't think, like, the kinds of things that get video essays are, oh. Uh, okay. That that's lovely. <laughs> Interesting. Really, a, a nice way to get over those rails. Just land your balls right in the middle, and it will move itself. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think the generally speaking, video essays get made on things that were already popular, but or were sort of popular, yeah, or at but least kind like, of need more uh, looking into. Yeah, or at least like that's my issue with always using hyperbole again. You mm. know, like if I if I went and searched, you know, maybe someone has just made like a twenty minute video about it. But still, like, is there a game that 
when I covered, it was, you know, like I'd say, only 30-second IGN clips. But right. now, maybe over the years, like someone else has focused. You're basically some trying to see attention if, on it. Are yeah. were you are you the hipster of any of no. these no. games you've covered? Because mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like that's you know a bigger, more popular channel doing a video essay on like Go Go Hyper Grind. You know, yeah. would be would be really odd. Yeah, like It'd perfect be example. Very I mean, like Yo, someone with like stuff. yeah tens of thousands of subscribers, and it's like here is this forgotten. Atlas yeah. made Soul Shaded Skateboarding game, you know. But with John John K, right? Yeah, so John I mean K. like that's I think of all the games that are kind of obscure that you've covered, Go Go Hypergrind might be the one that has a chance of mm -hmm. getting a, a video S I mean obviously not if we Holy exclude God. like Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk almost certainly has a bunch. Yeah. But like but like of the obscure games, I think Go Go Hypergrind has maybe the most big name talent associated with it to uh, with broad appeal, you know, yeah. you could come at yeah. that from a whole bunch of different directions. Plus, there is more to the whole uh, thing than just like certain games or whatever. Like, you could look at entire companies, publishers, and such. Like, You're right, anything yeah. from MTV Games, the like of like TJ Lavin or MTV Skateboarding <laughs> yeah. and such. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it almost kind of feels like yes, there was a time before Insetic did series on, mm -hmm. on the big games, you know? Yeah. It was like, oh my it was good like, god. <laughs> Tony 20 was an unexpected turn in covering things people had actually heard of. You know? Yeah, oh my actually, god. it's. And Tony 20 really changed the nature of your channel almost. Like, it seems sort of weird to me that we used to go almost exclusively for things no one had ever heard of, mm. you know? And, like, after the Skate series, if you got, if you want to keep doing stuff like this, will you go back to obscure shit? Like, you could. Yeah. I, I, I mean... Wouldn't, it wouldn't be that weird. I feel like we would get back into the rhythm of that pretty quickly, but it, it's just weird. Like, I have no conception of what would come after this. And to me, personally, it's like... There is more interest in going for like the weird and obscure stuff than there is of doing what everybody else is doing. Like everybody no. has played and beaten Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two and all of that, but you can't really think of many people who have looked into the likes of Go Hyper Grind or uh, Matt Hoffman Pro BMX or even just like the really out there stuff like Cyclone Circus or. No. Gravity Crusty Games Demons. Bike. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel the opposite. I feel like a lot more people have been regularly commenting through Tony 20 and the SSX series and the Skate series, you know, talking about their nostalgia and such. Oh, and, no, no, and yeah. no. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying I feel like it, it, for us as commentators, it's, uh, I don't know. Take a seat. I don't think it would be different, but it just feels a little bit weird to me because I'm so used to having absolutely no familiarity with what I'm seeing on screen. <laughs> mm. um, you know, like, when you played Krusty Demons, I the only, I recognize things because I'm a human on planet Earth, <laughs> but, like, right. the game systems were like, what is this? What why the, did they make it like this? Who, yeah, who made why this? does this exist? Yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy to think, like, if I want to stick with series after this... God, I don't know. What do I you mean, do? These were yeah. kind of the big three, and I guess I could go back to, like, Cool Borders, but <laughs> I never played Cool Borders, and those are, you know, PlayStation 1, and, yeah. and, and really, uh, I don't want to say janky, but, yeah. uh, I mean, there's... Yeah, yeah, so I guess, like, if I want to go with obscure stuff, I need to keep moving forward in time, you know, and then it's not yeah. really obscure, it's just undersold. It's kind yeah. of like what, what uh, you know, AVGN ended up doing, right? Like, uh, originally he was doing stuff that was only in, like, the NES or the Genesis, and then, like, little by little he's moved forward, and I believe he's covered stuff that was on the original Xbox now, and it's like, it feels super weird to me that he's doing that, because it's like... I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, weird that he's even continuing the series, but like, that's a but whole you, other can of worms. Mm. You started your first videos when these games were being released, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess, like, again, like, aside from Skate skate series, like, looking ahead, I, I, I want to finish, you know, like, the Amped series and do Amped 3. That oh, yeah. was really weird and whatever. But, I mean, again, we're not talking about shit no one's heard of. We're just talking about 
shit that says it was an extreme sports game that didn't have a huge audience or, you know, yeah. like, maybe I can move up into, again, like, Riders Republic or whatever. I mean, I bought it and played through it, and sure, it would be the most new thing, but, hey, uh, it, it's a lot easier to do a game that I know than, yeah, that's true. you know, games I don't know. Like I said, the Skate series, I'd never really played them before this, and so sometimes it's just like, uh, do I have to get up and boot mm. up this game and fuck around with the thumbstick more and shit? I have to Whereas, learn like, the Tony game Hawk and, and then it, play. Like yeah. SSX, it was like, hell yeah, let me just hit record and bust out million points on this show right. off track, you know, yeah. again. Like I do every other week, you know? I, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I think the thing about, like, if you were to stick with series, you would almost by necessity have to be covering big stuff. Because, like, the only games that get sequels are successful games. So, like, mm. uh, uh, that's especially true now, but, like, it was still true back then. So, like, if you're looking at the PS1, PS2 era, um, uh, I think you're gonna... Ha if you're doing obscure stuff, you're gonna do stuff that's not in a series. Yeah, yeah, again, like, the only series I haven't really done is, like, Cool Borders. And again, I... No. I really don't want... I kind of yeah. don't want to. Yeah. As like, much as, like, Blackout wants me to, because oh there's a Blake God. in Cool Wars 3, you know. And Is that those. why? I didn't know that was why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's... Yeah. Okay. You know, All it's right. like whenever a Bob shows up in a movie or something, and someone's always like, hey, it's you. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean... I I had that. Connor actually had a bad run in video games for a while, oh. but I oh, think yeah. his, Connors have kind of turned around. Yeah. You know, like... Like, a, like, Connors were never, like, a great character uh, until, like, the last ten years or so, but I can't... Either, but all right I, I can think of... Well, I I don't know. There's some okay Connors. People um, like yeah. the Connor in Detroit become human, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's good. But, I mean, before that, it was, like, bit roles or the main guy from Assassin's Creed 3, which right. people thought was, like, oh, this is not a great game. See, yeah. actually, I you know I was recently replaying Assassin's Creed Three, and I actually have grown a little bit fond of that Connor um, for reasons that are not necessarily oh, obvious. Like he's, I, I mean, I can go into it more when you know when we're off mic because I it's it's not that interesting, think, honestly. Yeah, it feels like Assassin's Creed Three is one of those things where when it came out, it wasn't what people wanted, but when Assassin's Creed became a series that just pumped. Uninspired game out after uninspired game. People yeah. looked back at three and was like, you know, that's not actually that bad. Yeah, hmm. it, there are parts of it that are are still very tedious. Um, but and I did end up not. I ended up stopping my playthrough because the game is just too long. Uh, I lost interest. But like, I got much further into it than I did the first time. Um, I don't know. It's. Like you said, it's it, it was also like right before Assassin's Creed completely changed. You know, like they were still building things in I think an old version of, or, or like a, a newer version of the old engine from Assassin's oh, Creed yeah. One. That was it's kind of wild. Sorry, I keep interrupting. It's no, kind of no, wild it. how that series has like really gone through changes to where actually recently it's become Ooh. like the series for big historical Ooh, fiction kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Things like, you know, Valhalla and, uh, Origins and... Oh my god, is there Valhalla. Valhalla. Um, Valhalla. I think Valhalla is the most recent one. Yeah, but, but like, suddenly it's god, like, that if you want, long. like, a... Like, a History Channel kind of epic <laughs> fiction game. Here's the Norse one. Here's yeah. the Egyptian one, you know? Mm. Yeah. There's really not that much historical fiction in video games. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know what's another thing that's not, that, like... You don't see in video games, I think at all. I, I don't think I've ever seen this in a video game. Musicals. There's no reason in principle you couldn't have a musical video mm. game. Yeah, I can only think of like one. Uh, yeah, and like, I don't mean like a, a rhythm game or a music game. Like, those exist. I'm talking about one where like the characters break out into song. Um,. And actually, Jacob Geller uh, made a video recently about Metal Gear Rising, which it's a great video. He's a great, great YouTuber. You should totally check him out. He's actually one of those video essay guys. Um, but he, one of the things he pointed out was that in Metal Gear Rising, during all the boss battles, the moment the emotion reaches its peak, lyrics enter the song, which technically makes that game a musical. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah like, and I'm like, fuck yeah. I haven't seen that video yet, but I'm in like, I, 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 everyone knows about the power of Metal Gear Rising's music. And oh like, my god. Like, if, if people haven't watched it through, like, Drakengard 3 as well. Yeah. Like, uh, I, yes. I don't remember the specifics, but the main bosses, all like, when you get to their encounters, uh, you know, there's a cutscene before it or something, and then all of them, like, scream or at least let out some sound or whatever that yeah. transitions into the boss track. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to get the examples. It was, like, the one thing I remember from that game. Yeah, but, yeah and Dragon <laughs> God is quite an insane series to the point that it's, like, weirdly branched into two different series. Yeah, you know, I, th I can only think of two series that I, well, no, three, three series that have done that. Final Fantasy did that with Final Fantasy VII, right? Like, ton of Final Fantasy 7 games, but Final Fantasy is a little unusual. Um, Persona did branch from Shin Megami Tensei, and then uh, Drakengard branched into Nier. Yeah, Nier I can't, and Nier I can't think of another series like that. Yeah. Where, like, one entire series branched off from another series. Although I'm sure somebody in the comments will, will, will cite something, right? Like, I, I'm not some encyclopedic... Hmm. Wizard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm no, sure there's tons of examples. Wizard. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, so this is... This is gonna sound stupid. You know what's a game that I remember from my childhood that uh, I I kind of want to play again? What? There's a game called Slam Dunk Typing. Um, the graphics were dog shit, but the game was released in 1997, so I think even for 1997, they weren't trying to push the limits of graphics, but mm. it was like a, a typing game, and I remember distinctly, like, there was one of the, one of the modes was based on that uh, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan commercial for McDonald's, where, like, they're standing there, and they, they, you know, the two of them are challenging to a game of horse, and it's like, okay, off the, off the rim, off the backboard, nothing but net, and then, like, off yeah, this thing, off right that there. thing, nothing but net, like, they literally I just ripped it. off that commercial to make... <laughs> The mini game, and like I genuinely did not know that commercial was related to the game until like three days ago. Huh. <laughs> Even though these were both like things from my childhood, and I remember distinctly both of them, I did not make the connection until like I saw the commercial again, and I was like, "Oh shit, that's what they're doing! Yeah. They're just they're I... just copying the commercial." I don't think I've ever heard of. Slam dunk typing. Same. It's it's not it's not famous at all. I don't know where my parents found it. I think my dad just wanted to get me to learn how to type, and so he this has to that. be the same feeling as you had when I referenced uh, Snood that one time. No, I, I remember fucking... Snood. I remember okay. Snood. Okay. Well, everybody remembers Snood. All I remember is just you know the various typing games that yeah. you know the school Mavis computers Beacon. in elementary school. No, we didn't even have Mavis Beacon. What was it? We had that one where it was like, you were like a s astronaut, like space explorer, and you went to like alien planets. And I, I can remember, remember like one or two images, but I don't remember I feel anything like, else. I feel like that typing game also had like other mini games in it. And like one of them, if I'm remembering correctly, was like a genetics one where like you type the name of animals and then like it just like puts like a lion head on like a serpent's body uh, with like elk antlers, like depending on what animals you typed in or something mm -hmm. like that, if I remember correctly. Then I may again, be mixing up those games. I am yeah. truly an atrocious typer. I am... I'm still a two two finger typer even mm. as I approach thirty. I'm still yeah. a look down at the keyboard. <laughs> I, I just I never I never had really had to. So yeah. I probably never got past like the first or second level. Mm, and and for me when it comes to a typing out, I remember there was like this sort of medieval night game where you basically go through different areas and fight all sorts of knights and such through typing contests and such and it's like mm -hmm. it, it's it it's a weird thing and it's kind of weird to me just not only how popular the typing game stuff is but how long it has survived. I mean, even to this day... Yeah, like, there's still typing games. Yeah, House of the Dead, there's still a typing of the dead alongside with it but every I, time. I feel, like that one, I feel like that one is kind of the lone exception to the rule that typing games tend to be aimed at children and generally, like, kind of lower production value. Yeah. I would really like to see typing games get, like, a not, not necessarily a resurgence, but, like, 
a total reinvention. I mean, you know mm. me, I love hybrid video game genres. I would love to see like an RPG where, like a Final, Final Fantasy turn-based RPG kind of thing, and then like the way you do attacks involves typing in some way, right? Like the longer words you type, the more powerful your move is or something. Yeah. You know? I I feel like in some way it probably does exist, but I really have no idea what it what it is or yeah. where it could be. Yeah. <laughs> like I've loaded up, you know, go to Steam and search like typing games, and I feel like either we'll find nothing or find a surprising amount. Yeah, just <laughs> but yeah, like 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 Bob said, like aside from typing of the dead, all the other ones we were talking about are like aimed at kids and included in the software package. For school computers, yeah, you yeah. Know, to teach the kids how to. Type. Oh man, I bet there's like typing hentai games on Steam. Okay, right? Okay. Like there has to be, right? Yeah, I mean, there's every other type of genre plus hentai. hentai game. Yeah, you know, sliding puzzle plus hentai. Uh, right. Yeah. So like, I don't, I don't want that, but I feel like it'd make a good gift. <laughs> <laughs> to remove the bra, type assassinations. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go look right now. Oh my god. Oh no. Uh, Hentai no. typing. There's and going to be some go together. Uh, it's like you can cram results. it into a new genre name. Yeah. Okay, let's see what this has got oh for me. Oh my god, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you know if I find something. I'll... <laughs> okay. We'll you guys, we can just keep talking. No, this doesn't look like it. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll well... well competition. I'll, I, you know what, I'll look I'm later. Who cares? This. Yeah. Yeah. I do kind of like how... Like, you resurface to all these old locations of Skate 1, and it's always... Do a little bit of a film thing every now and then over these areas, and then a big old competition to end it off. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. a nice little but, bit I mean, of progression. It does get to show, uh... You know, give some more love to some of the areas in Skate One that either didn't have anything to do or that you couldn't really access them because you couldn't walk. You know, you were stuck yeah. on the board. Like, and I always you on love more it. Of the rooftops, and as we just saw, you know, you went over to that little Embarcadero reference and actually mm -hmm. did something there and, mm. and did a challenge called Gon's Gap. You know, actually call it referencing Mark Gonzalez and yeah. what he did over there, you know. And That's I always cool. do love it with the competitions where the AI is all trying to kill each other. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this select this specific place is trying to kill you. You see that <laughs> roof over your head? Yeah. yeah. If you get any air at all, you're gonna slam your face into it and it's like God, that would be so they fucking scary for real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, like imagine you guys are seeing a competition and then the dude like a dude just takes a jump, totally normal jump. Cocks our head into concrete. Suddenly the competition's over. Yeah, like this is not a good place. This is yeah. so dangerous. In like a not necessarily obvious way, <laughs> you know. There's not like obstacles in your way or whatever. It's just way too dangerous to be doing this. Pretty much. Right. That's what makes it extreme, though. You know what? Okay. Idea. Tower defense game. But you can also individually do damage to the little mobs that come at you by typing the words that are underneath them. Oh, okay, we're back to typing. I'm just okay. I'm still thinking about typing. And then also, like, maybe you can up- when you upgrade your towers, instead of just doing, like, straight upgrades, you have to do a little typing test. Like, it'll give you a word and you have a certain amount of time to type it, and then, like, if you type it quickly, you'll get the full upgrade. You know, or otherwise you'll get a fractional upgrade. Oh, good Jesus. God! Oh, that was so much crunchier than I was expecting. Dude, yeah. remember in Skate 1 when I bonked my Ugh. head and I got signed out of Xbox Live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good no, t God. I feel like tower defense would work well as a, you know, add typing into it kind of thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like that initial idea of a tower defense of typing and all of that, I think that does exist, does or it? did exist, but okay. I think it was like a Flash game, and, you know, yeah. they're kind of those, A lot of those are gone. Yeah, yeah, you've got to get crazier, Bob. Yeah, that's true. You've got to think of more ridiculous ideas. <laughs> I mean... You've lost your touch. you got to go you beyond know, the, the full The obvious goal. crazy one is typing plus first-person shooter, but that's the one that's done. 
Yeah. Like, right. Typing of the Dead, right? So, like... Yeah, I, I feel like they got there from the kind of light gun games where, yeah, you yeah. know, you get automatically moved. Now, a typing extreme sports game. Hell yeah! Yeah. Now, do, now, now, time do you type the flip. names of the tricks, or do you <laughs> oh, type other things? <laughs> you go I into the like... air and quickly go 10-figure keyboard to type Nolly 180 <laughs> pop shove it, Nolly half cab backwards varial heel flip. I think oh. I think the problem with this is it would actually get really easy as you like got muscle memory for these individual things, right? Like kickflip 180. Once you, if you just have to type kickflip 180 over and over and over to do that move, yeah. it becomes easier every time you do it, right? So like, and then you're told I to think... type in in like 10 seconds, Nolly 360 shove pop shove it. On one hand, isn't that what? You know, learning extreme sports is all about. Like, it's hard to think it's easier. But I. But on the other hand, yeah, I can also see it to where, like... Uh, it would maybe know, stop it, being fun. It shouldn't fun. be the actual words, you know, and, yeah. and yeah. should just be, like, different difficulties of words they can pull down. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, like, I, that could work, an extreme sports game. I think my question then becomes, are you able to move your character freely? Mm. Like, yeah, like, like if it's really, like, typing it, it again, like, the F, typing FPS is more kind of, like, light gun typing, moving you yeah. from enemy yeah. to It's on so rails. It, it'd almost be a thing of, like, how Tony Hawk Ride and Shred kind of had to be where it, like, keeps you on the one path <laughs> and just get, sends you to ramps and such to give you the opportunities, you know? I think, I think what it should be is you... Like WASD, I'm thinking this as a PC game. WASD, mouse control, whatever you do for um, playing a PC extreme sports game. And then when you get up to a jump, game like slow mos and then words appear on screen. And like maybe, like depending on, like, like it gives you some options of things you can do. And you can choose which words to type in order to create the trick on your own, right? Like, uh, like it's not like it just predetermines what trick you're going to do. It mm. says, like, okay, do you want it to be varial? Well, type this word, and it'll become varial. Yeah. You know, or whatever. Like, pop, shove it, backside, you know, like, and so, like, backside would be a separate modifier that you have to type. And it goes slow-mo as you're approaching the jump, and then once you've hit the jump, it goes regular speed again, and you see the character do the trick. Hmm. Or something like that. Also, I just want to bring this up real quickly. I love how the game literally says after you do that competition, "Man, you sure did do a beat down on that." <laughs> like, yeah. You just <laughs> now go online. Yeah, go online and beat the shit out of all the other players. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Launch. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I know there wasn't a lot of directly talking about the game, but those were the two DLCs, you know? Or, yeah. you, you know, these other two parts of the Skate 1 3-pack. Yeah, and they were cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they were cool, and, you know, pretty nice yeah. uh, to be able to to go in there, there with, go. you know, a lot more abilities and be able to find them and such. Yeah. Mm. And... You're, nice. you're alive. Good job. Yeah. Do the peace Safely signs. landed. Uh-oh. <laughs> For a moment, it looked like he was reaching out to God. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute. Yeah. So if if anyone wants to, you know, crowdfund our typing extreme sports game, you know, I, yeah. I feel like we're on a veritable gold mine. Like we should start a studio. Uh, we're all ideas guys, but you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where you yeah. all come in. Yeah, exactly. crowdfund it, and we'll get a programmer. And crowd make it. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, I know some of the guys at Apogee, uh, so we could probably get it published by them if we make something cool. <laughs> like Incidic 47's type skate typing skateboarding. Yeah. <laughs> skate typing. Sky uh, skyping. Oh my oh. god. Oh That's god. where that came from. Oh, and now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> ha ha. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have one more video going to Rob Deerdeck's Fantasy Factory DLC before we wrap up Skate 2, so see you then.